60 days. That's exactly how much faster I finish my cattle compared to the average rancher in my region. 60 days that translate into thousands of dollars in savings, less stress on my animals, and way more profit per head. And here's what nobody tells you. It's not about spending more money on fancy supplements or expensive genetics. In fact, one of my biggest breakthroughs came from fixing a mistake I didn't even know I was making. A mistake that's costing most cattle producers two full months of feeding, labor, and waiting. Stay with me because what I'm about to share will completely change the way you think about finishing cattle. And I guarantee at least three of these strategies will work on your operation, no matter the size. Let me start by being brutally honest with you. Five years ago, my finishing times were embarrassing. I was hitting market weight at around 210 days on feed, sometimes even longer. My feed conversion ratios were mediocre, my costs per pound of gain were through the roof, and I kept telling myself it was just the genetics or the weather or bad luck. But deep down, I knew something was fundamentally wrong with my approach. Then, one day, I met an old rancher at a livestock auction. He was finishing his steers in about 140 days, consistently. I almost didn't believe him, so I visited his operation, and what I saw completely shattered everything I thought I knew about cattle finishing. Here's the first game changer, and pay close attention because this alone can cut two to three weeks off your finishing time. It's all about the transition period. Most producers, myself included back then, rush cattle from pasture or backgrounding straight into a high concentrate ration. We think we're being efficient, getting them on energy fast, but here's what actually happens. The rumen gets shocked. Acidosis becomes a constant threat. Cattle go off feed, sometimes for days. Their gut health suffers, and when gut health suffers, everything suffers. Growth slows down, immune function drops, and you end up with inconsistent gains that stretch your finishing period way longer than necessary. What I learned to do instead is implement a precise, strategic step-up program over 21 to 28 days. And I'm not talking about the generic advice you read in textbooks. I'm talking about monitoring each pen daily, watching for the subtle signs that tell you when to move to the next concentrate level. Manure consistency, bunk behavior, rumination time. These are your real indicators, not some predetermined schedule. When you get this transition right, cattle hit their stride faster, they stay on feed consistently, and that's when the magic happens. Consistent intake equals consistent gains, and consistent gains equal faster finish times. But here's where most people mess up, even when they know about transition periods. They don't match their ration energy density to their cattle's actual frame size and physiological stage. This is critical. Are you feeding the same ration to a medium-frame steer that you're feeding to a large-framed one? Because if you are, you're leaving massive amounts of performance on the table. And before I go deeper into the ration strategies that changed everything for me, do me a quick favor. If you're getting value from this, hit that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow right now. We're building a community of serious cattle producers who want real, actionable information, not fluff. And trust me, what's coming next is the exact formula I use to maximize average daily gain while actually reducing my feed costs. You don't want to miss this. All right, let's talk about the second major breakthrough, ration formulation based on metabolizable energy and protein synchronization. I know that sounds technical, but stick with me because I'm going to make this incredibly practical. For years, I was focused solely on crude protein percentages, 12%, 13%, 14%. But crude protein means almost nothing if it's not synchronized with your energy levels and if it's not in a form the animal can actually use efficiently. Here's what I discovered. When you match your degradable intake protein with your fermentable energy at the rumen level, microbial protein synthesis explodes and microbial protein is the highest quality protein your cattle can get. This means faster muscle deposition, better feed efficiency, and significantly improved average daily gain. I reformulated my finishing rations with this principle, working with a nutritionist who actually understood rumen fermentation dynamics, not just book values. My average daily gains jumped from 3.2 pounds to 4.1 pounds. Do the math on that over a finishing period. That's multiple weeks saved right there. 
The third element, and this is huge, is managing bunk space and feeding frequency like your profit depends on it, because it does. I used to feed once a day, sometimes twice if I had time. Big mistake. Cattle are grazing animals by nature. Their rumen functions best with consistent nutrient flow, not massive dumps of feed followed by long empty periods. When I shifted to feeding smaller amounts three times per day and ensuring every single animal had adequate bunk access at the same time, competition decreased, shy feeders started performing, and pen uniformity improved dramatically. You might be thinking three times a day sounds like a lot of work, and you're right, it takes more labor, but here's the reality. Those 60 days I save on the back end are worth way more than the extra hour per day I invest in feeding. Plus, when you're at the bunk three times daily, you're observing your cattle three times daily. You catch problems early, a steer going off feed, early signs of respiratory issues, anything that could derail performance gets spotted and addressed immediately. Now, the fourth strategy is something almost nobody talks about, and honestly, it's a bit controversial, but it works. I manipulate lighting in my finishing barn. Cattle, like most mammals, have circadian rhythms that affect hormone production, particularly melatonin and cortisol. These hormones directly influence feed intake, digestion efficiency, and growth. By extending light exposure to 18 to 20 hours per day during finishing, I keep melatonin suppressed and encourage more feeding behavior. My cattle literally eat more, rest efficiently in those shorter dark periods, and grow faster. This single change added another half pound per day to my average daily gains. But here's the critical part that nobody mentions when they talk about lighting programs. You cannot just throw more lights in the barn and call it done. Light intensity matters. Uniformity matters. You need at least 50 to 70 lux at the feed bunk level. And you need to avoid creating dark corners where cattle will congregate and become less active. I mapped my entire barn with a light meter and strategically placed fixtures to ensure even coverage. The difference was immediate and measurable. Fifth breakthrough, water. I know you're thinking everyone knows cattle need water, but do you know that water temperature, cleanliness, flow rate, and access points can affect daily feed intake by up to 20%? 20%? I was providing water, sure, but it was often cold in winter, sometimes had algae buildup in summer, and my waterers couldn't keep up with demand during peak drinking times. Cattle would wait, get impatient, some wouldn't drink enough, and dehydration, even mild dehydration, absolutely destroys feed efficiency and gain. I upgraded to heated waterers in winter installed a circulation and filtration system for summer, and doubled my watering points per pen. Now my cattle have access to clean, palatable water at optimal temperature exactly when they want it. The return on investment was under six months, because when cattle drink optimally, they eat optimally, and when they eat optimally, they gain optimally. Here's something else that almost cost me everything before I figured it out. Stress. Chronic, low-grade stress from overcrowding, poor handling, inadequate ventilation, or constant environmental disruptions. Stress releases cortisol. Cortisol is catabolic, meaning it breaks down muscle tissue. It also suppresses immune function and reduces feed intake. You simply cannot finish cattle efficiently in a stressful environment, period. I redesigned my entire handling system using low-stress techniques. I improved ventilation to maintain consistent air quality without drafts. I reduced stocking density slightly, yes, slightly fewer head per pen, but each head performing significantly better. And I trained every single person who works with my cattle on calm, predictable handling methods. The result? Healthier cattle, fewer medical treatments, better gains, and faster finish times. The sixth and final strategy is data-driven decision-making. I track everything, individual animal weights every 28 days, pen level feed intake daily, feed conversion ratios weekly, health events immediately, cost per pound of gain constantly. This data tells me exactly what's working and what isn't. It removes emotion and guesswork from my operation. When a pen isn't performing, I know within days, not weeks, and I can adjust before it becomes a major problem. 
So there you have it. Six proven strategies that cut 60 days off my finishing time and transformed my entire operation from barely profitable to consistently strong margins. Strategic transition management, energy and protein synchronization, optimized feeding frequency and bunk management, controlled lighting programs, superior water management and stress reduction combined with rigorous data tracking. These aren't theories. This is what I do every single day, and it works. Now, here's my challenge to you. Pick just one of these strategies and implement it this week. Just one. Start tracking your results, and I promise you'll see improvements. And as you start seeing those results, come back and tell me about it in the comments below. What worked best for your operation? What challenges did you face? Let's learn from each other, because that's what this community is all about. If you're serious about improving your cattle operation, about increasing profitability, about finishing cattle faster and more efficiently, then subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now. Hit that notification bell so you never miss the practical, real-world strategies we share every single week. Share this video with another rancher who needs to hear this message. Together, we're raising the standard of cattle production, one animal, one strategy, one day at a time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.